Hello everyone, good afternoon to most, good morning to many of you. <sighs> I apologize for being so late. I needed a little bit more time. It's been, oh, it's been a rough few days. I'm not gonna lie. Now, this isn't going to be a tea stream in the sense of I, I have a camera on tea. The whole plan is I'm just going to literally off the cuff talk about tea for three hours and answer everyone's questions because it's been a really hard few days and I'm going to be exceedingly self-indulgent. Because... I want it. This is what I want. So, and this is also going to be a question-answering stream. So, if you all have questions about tea, you are welcome to ask them. And I will be happy to answer. I drink so much tea. 
it's... <laughs> <laughs> I, I drink tea every day. It is my beverage of choice. Some people drink a whole bunch of soda. I drink a whole bunch of tea. Um, like, <laughs> all day. That is my main source of hydration. Ah. In fact, I, I ha right now I am drinking one of my comfort teas, which is a jasmine green tea. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to be teaching you how I do tea and some information on the side. But first, I'd, I want to apologize for taking so long starting stream. I know I'm, I'm starting about an hour and a half late. I um, a, a, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that I was getting the, um, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And, um, I, and I said, boy, I, I, I hope that I don't. Um, I don't get any of the really bad side effects. Well, uh, like, you know, we'll find out in about two or three weeks. And, well, two and a half weeks later, I got my answer. So I've been struggling a little bit with that. Um, fortunately, today, a lot of the symptoms have abated. Though, um, I, I had a friend who had the same symptoms, which is, like, tingling, um... And for her, it progressed to muscle weakness. But for me right now, the, the symptoms seem to be abating. And I think I dodged the worst of it, fortunately. Um, but of course, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I've been struggling a lot with it. Um, it. It's hard talking about this because expressing any sort of hesitancy toward vaccination is taboo right now. Um... But I can talk about my experience, and my experience has been difficult. Um, symptoms went on for a couple of days. Um, they seem to be getting better. So, I'm not doing well. I'm, I'm decidedly, like, maybe physically I'm doing better, but mentally I still am um, rather anxious. So, today is just a very, very self-indulgent stream. Where I just talk about something that I find really interesting and that I love. Um, first, holy crap, what the heck. Uh, we had a level 5 <laughs> subtrain? Level f uh, level 4 completed. No, it says it completed a level 5. I feel like... I feel like we get cocked out of the level of, like, hype train we get to. Because on my feed over here, it says... Uh, hype train complete at level five, but on in the stream chat it says level four. <laughs> but I want to acknowledge everyone first. Farah has been subbed for two months now. Baron von Jarvis has been subbed for four months, so came around right uh, when I was doing my tea streams. Uh, Star Shard of the hundred bits getting in on the action to kick off the hype train. I'm willing to bet. And Charlotte Cumberbatch. With another hundred bits. Master Garrus gifted out ten subs. Goodness gracious. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Error 404, name not found. Gave a, uh, gave out a sub to the community too. Thank you so much. Arkwolf has been subbed for two months now. Pines await with two months. Just saying sippy stream hype. And Unity Bird has been subbed for four months to say, I wanna be like daddy. I wanna be like daddy. Okay. <laughs> Fallen Pineapple has been subbed for four months now. And they just say boop. Good. Queen Tiefling has been subbed for 11 months. I... <laughs> <laughs> with the with the very intermittent on and off streams. Thank you so much. And they say, Happy Mardi Gras. Is it Mardi Gras? I never I never quite partook in anything like that. Oh, your voice is A1. Ah shucks. You all are way too kind to me. And Coffee Kindred has been subbed for two months too. Hey Fred and Chat, we're we talking about tea, my favorite subject, next to coffee. Yeah, I have a friend who's trying to get me into coffee, and <laughs> I'm I'm nervous. Caffeine, the caffeine in coffee was always too much for me. It um, it always made me jittery. I don't know if drinking so much tea might have um, 
made like made me more used to it. Like, you know, maybe I'll try coffee and I'll try out. I'll try it out. Maxi the Sea Ought. Just sub. Thank you so much. And of course, that's a lot of beans. So you know what's coming. It looks like you will get to this that fanfare is at the end just the the roll of fanfares at the end is just absolutely beautiful also don't worry i made sure to click out of the uh, out of the the screen that is nothing but beans you love how well the bean part comes through yeah just bean 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 like you can focus on any part of the phrase and it will just completely stand out <laughs> Now, thank you all so much for supporting me. I um, I have a couple of, well, I have one really big, uh, nice piece of news that is, um, well, actually, I, I have a couple little pieces of news. Um, first of all, you guys might have noticed, but I am now partnered. I, I managed to make it into the partner program on Twitch, so now I have that fancy little check mark. Um, but it does also mean a couple of cool things for stream. First of all, you might all notice that the uh, prefix for the emotes is a little bit different now. Uh, it, it has now gone from Fredri22, which is just the default affiliate name that they give you, to um, T-Owl. So now all, the prefix for the, uh, for the emotes is T-Owl. Oh, Captain Erica, thank you so much for subbing for four months now. And they just say, Bean me, daddy. Bean me up, daddy. Now that <laughs> thank you. And Timothy Snyder has been... So, Timothy is um, a moderator for the stream and also moderates my Patreon Discord, which is, like, he, he just does so much. Um, the he <laughs> for some reason, he also subs. But thank you so much. And they just say, woo, partner. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. Thank you so much, both of you. But yeah, partner, um, because I was talking about a thing. You can all see that the prefix for the emotes is different, but I also have another 14 emote slots that I'm going to be working with Kirpe on filling up. Uh, one of the things that we are desperately needing right now is a Grimace emote, or like, you, you know, like, Lime Sweat. We need something like that because there are enough moments on stream like that that we just need something like that. Um, what else? Like those, um, those are the big things. Also, the um, also very importantly, uh, now that I have partner, all of the VODs will stick around for two months. So that should allow everyone the opportunity to catch up if they need to, if they want, if they are interested in doing so, of course. Um, another thing I want to point out is um, Food with the Dude updated our uh, starting GIF. Some of you might have seen it when we started, but check this out. Ah, oh, it's so cool. Those extra animations are fantastic. So thank you very much, Food with the Dude. I also... Um, um, well, there, there's some more stuff coming down the pipeline. So we're, we're going to have more emotes. There's going to be, woo, big eye. <laughs> there are going to be more emotes. There are going, there's going to be some more, uh, some more stream assets coming up in the near future. So yeah, streams are becoming more and more of a thing as time goes on. I, I don't quite want to spoil everything just yet, but you'll see. I need sippy though. Hmm. Did the plans with regular car reviews just completely fall through? No, he hasn't. He hasn't come yet. He, he'll be coming in like, I don't know. I need to double check the dates. But yeah, he's gonna be like, I'm. I'm gonna be uh, seeing him in person pretty soon. Don't don't you worry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I think that's just about all of the things I wanted to get to before I rambled on and on about tea. 
And that's literally what this is going to be. It's just going to be me rambling forever about tea and answering everyone's questions about tea. I personally right now am sipping on a uh, jasmine flavored green tea, which is classic. Like there's so many jasmine flavored teas in China, especially jasmine is especially uh, popular in China. But they actually have some of the jasmine flowers in the tea itself. So the, the jasmine flavor is quite strong. Eagle Cohort Dom. Hey. Uh, AKA Scipio. Thank you so much for subbing for five months. Ma'am, my sleep schedule is torched. <laughs> Are you okay? Well, you know, if you need to rest a little bit, there's always the bean room now. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. Enjoy. <laughs> Yogi tea? Um, okay, so one thing that I'm going to say, the first thing that I'm going to say talking about um, about tea is I'm not into tea bags. Like, if you are looking for like a convenient tea that like goes in a tea bag, this is not the stream for you. Because <laughs> the, here's the problem with tea bags. Tea bags are almost all subpar tea. They're almost always bitter um, and unpleasant. And people, so th one of the misconceptions that I want to correct is that people think that um, that tea is supposed to be bitter. It doesn't have to be. In fact, most of the time it isn't. Maybe there will be like a tiny bit of bitterness on some teas, but certainly not all teas especially if uh, you know how to brew it because everyone just says, oh yeah, you throw the tea bag in the cup and then you pour boiling water on it. Well, for like the reason that the tea that you make with that is so bitter is for a couple of reasons. First of all, most teas are not, like most teas do not steep well at boiling. Steeping a tea at boiling is going to often bring out the tannins, which is the chemical that makes tea bitter. So already, uh, people are not steeping the leaves the way that they need to. But uh, the other thing is that the tea leaves in the bag are of very, very low quality, especially for a specific reason. The tea leaves in a tea bag are often all crushed, which means that it's more like a tea powder at that point. And when that happens, all of the tannins, again, the chemical that makes the tea bitter, um, is going to be leached out very, very quickly because there's just more surface area and it's broken into the center of the leaf, which makes a, an unpleasant brew. That's why um, when you hear about like sweet tea, for example, you know, they just throw Lipton into a, into a mug. They have to sweeten it with so much sugar because it's so bitter because it's just powder. It's, it's bad. Like, so what I'm going to say is this is not a stream about tea bags. Um, tea bags are just all worse. Oh, don't the tea bags also include more of the shaking and non-leaf parts? Yeah, sometimes what they'll do is they'll literally just shake the tea leaves off and then take the powder and stuff those into bags and then call that tea. So you're getting the worst. How do you transition from a tea bag enthusiast into a tea snob? Asks Kaogain. Uh, well, stick around on this stream. I am going to turn all of you into tea snobs. Do you adjust your tea making depending on hard or soft water? Okay, so that's one thing that's important. I would recommend generally using filtered water if you can. Just because uh, the, f the flavor of the water, unless you're using particular kinds of spring water, because cert like some people will get really intense about like what kind of water you can use. Like if a lot of expensive tea makers will be like, hey, use this particular kind of spring water. Um, but usually just filtered water will, will do you well. It'll get rid of the extra flavor in the tap water. Mm. But I will say, tea, e even like good teas are a, like being into good tea is a cheaper hobby than like drinking a couple of cans of soda every day. It'll, it'll be cheap. Like it'll probably be cheaper. 
oh Jackie Fox butt gifted a one a gifted a tier one sub to T. <laughs> Thank you so much. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> so, first thing that uh, well, there are a lot of things that I'm going to be trying to um, dispel, I suppose. The uh, th there's a difference between tea from tea leaves and herbal tea. Yeah, what we're mostly going to get going to be covering on this stream is tea made from the tea plant. Camellia uh, sinensis. That is the tea plant that has caffeine and has uh, the L-theanine. So there is um, like there is herbal tea. Um, but what I've noticed is that a lot of the people that sell herbal tea and, like, make their own herbal blends, they tend to be really into, like, woo and, um, like, spirituality and, like, oh, this, um, and there's some of that in, you know, normal tea made from tea leaves as well, but there's a lot of it in, um, herbal tea where they're, like, this has, like... Like, th this is traditional medicine, and then there's, like, spiritual stuff with it. And I can never vouch for how accurate that is. <laughs> but th there is a lot of woo associated with herbal tea um, that you see less, I think, in uh, normal tea. Though you do see people saying, yeah, this tea has a calming chi. There there's a whole thing with chi around tea that I'm just not familiar with, so I'm not going to be talking about that. I just like the tasty leaf water. Hmm. But herbal tea is not really, um, it's not tea, it's not tea proper, right? It, it's tasty. I do like, uh, some herbal teas. Like, if I, I love chamomile. Chamomile's lovely. But that's not really what I'm going to be talking about because most herbal teas, you just, you know, you dump hot water on it and then it's good for one steep and that's it. It's very straightforward. Uh, herbal tea is very, very straightforward in that way. Uh, are you saying that herbal tea is not your cup of tea? No, I, I like herbal tea. It's just not usually what I what I drink. Uh, a lot You can sweeten a lot of these teas. The teas that I'm going to be talking about today mostly don't take any sweetener or milk or anything like that. Um, that's just not the kind of tea that I drink and that I know about. But, okay, shall we begin? Um, so f the first thing that you need to know about tea, about tea leaves, is that they are made from a particular kind of plant. In fact, I'm going to look it up. Camellia sinensis. Here, we'll have some images of it. Do do do. Yeah. Perfect. So, these are all images of the Camellia sinensis plant. And you'll probably notice there, like, a lot of these leaves look very different. Tea is a very, very advanced, um, it's, there's been a lot of breeding done, uh, with tea leaves, and different breeds of tea leaves will have vastly different properties from one another, and this, like, all of the different traits of tea leaves change, depending on, um, depending on what kind of tea is being made from them. Are there things like teas made with teas with mushrooms? Um, I mean, there are some psychedelic teas, but I've heard that the tea made from uh, psychedelic mushrooms is disgusting. <laughs> that's that's just what I've heard. They taste absolutely horrendous. There are better ways. <laughs> but yeah, um, tea leaves. So actually, first things first. The reason that tea leaves have caffeine is because caffeine is a poison. It's a poison to the um, to the bugs that would predate them. However, caffeine also has a stimulant effect on the human brain. So we actually, like, caffeine is technically poison. That's why the tea leaves evolved it. People discovered that uh, the rather pleasant effects of caffeine and that also it's it's pretty tasty when you put it in hot water. Nobody's really certain how um, how tea leaves were made in the in the first place, but 
Like, there are some apocryphal stories about it. Like, there was a king who, like, was drinking hot water and then leaves fell into his cup. And he's like, mm, that's tasty. I, it sound, that's pretty silly to me. That sounds pretty silly to me. But, you know, that's what some people say. People eventually started uh, breeding the tea plants to make different kinds of tea leaves. And now, you know, what, it's been thousands of years. Tea is a very old drink. But yeah, now uh, there are lots of different kinds of tea leaves or lots of different kinds of teas. They are cultivated for specific kinds of um, specific kinds of tea. And that actually takes us to um, the different kinds of tea. So if we are just talking about tea made from the Camellia sinensis plant, like when we when we talk about tea in this stream, that is what we are going to be saying. Oh, Ast uh, Farah, you read that in Asterix and Obelix? Because though I, I need to read those comics really badly. I've heard that they're good. <laughs> So the, the tea plant is used to make a bunch of different teas. And so off the top of my head, there's white tea in order of, you know what? I'm just going to make a text document to try to explain this. A new Google Doc. Okay. This works. <laughs> so. We have, yeah, this is a whiteboard stream. <laughs> we have white tea. So um, in order, so most, or like, wait, sorry, least processed, you have white tea. Then after that, you have green, you know what? Big, 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 okay. Least process, you have white tea, then you have green tea, green tree, green tea, then you have um, oolong tea, then you have black tea, then like um, most processed, and then down here you have poor, which is. <laughs> Which is just kind of its own thing. Poor is like this whole other like realm of of tea that we'll get to later. But first, let's just talk about white tea. So white tea is basically just tea leaves that have been dehydrated. That's it. Like all they have done is dried the tea leaves. So what is the processing? You uh, tea leaves are often baked and um and dried like they, they go through a whole process there are lots of different processes and then this this is a very basic version of what i'm talking about um matcha matcha is a green tea so the tea leaves are processed in a particular way and then turned into a powder and then that powder is added to hot water and so it's basically a like in, think instant tea right you just just add water um what is mate you know what let me double check because mate is, like, I think it's kind of its own thing. Um, it's made from a different plant. Yeah, I'm looking it up because I don't know much about it. Okay, yeah, holly. Yeah, it, it's it's made from uh, holly leaves. So that's a little bit different. Ma um, mate is very different. Technically herbal, uh, though it still has caffeine. Mm. So that's not really what we're going to be talking about. We're, we're going to be talking about um, about the, the tea plant. So there are actually, a, a lot of people don't know this, but this is something that you should probably know. Teas actually have two psychoactive chemicals in them. The first is caffeine, which all of you know as the stimulant, right? It if you don't know what caffeine is, what have you been doing? The other chemical is L-theanine. I think that's how you pronounce it. It is actually a depressant. It's, it's a calming drug. 
So, Kath, so basically, when you are drinking tea, you are getting crossfaded. Because you have an upper in caffeine and a downer in L-theanine. That is, and besides the fact that, um, that the caffeine in tea is just chemically different than, uh, the caffeine in, um, in, like, coffee or something like that, you also are getting crossfaded. Because you, <laughs> you have the caffeine that is making you, uh, alert and attentive and focused, and then you have the L-theanine, which is calming you. Which is very interesting. It's why, um, if you drink enough tea, some people actually drink lots of tea and get tea high. Where they just enter this very, very focused but calm state. You take L-theanine with your melatonin. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, there's some people in chat who know what I'm talking about. Kennedy! 1,000 bits. Thank you so much. Like, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, he's a founder. He's big, big, big sub. He's, he's been there from the beginning. Again, thank you so much, Kennedy. But yeah, uh, T has caffeine and L-theanine. It's, uh, it's nice. I, I would say that it's quite nice. It could, it could fuck you up. I mean, eh, it's okay. I, I, I mean, I'm okay from it. Yeah, it, I guess, you know, the dose makes the poison, right? Well, let me turn myself up just a little bit. There we go. I'm, I'm just cranking myself up. Can, and Kennedy, doing well. Good. I'm glad, I'm really glad you're doing well. How have you been? I've been better i it's been a really rough few days um i explained it earlier on the stream but i'm i'm i think i'm doing okay i think so huh <sighs> yeah yeah okay so right different kinds of tea you have the white tea which is um and i'll just kind of talk about the characteristics of it you know what let's bring the size down a bit so i can write in the sort of aspects of them let me make this smaller so white tea is very gentle compared to most other kinds of teas uh white tea is gentle it is um subtle uh, often the flavors of white tea are quite complicated uh, because if, if you like if you really if you have a very sensitive palate or you've trained your palate white tea will have uh, some very complicated flavors not strong flavors but just very complicated flavors hmm also they last uh, for lots of steeps so if you decide that you are going to, um, like, for example, uh, if you do what I do and gong fu the white tea, then it will last for a very, very long time. I will usually just drink the same white tea all day. I'll just use the same leaves all day. So if you're looking for a lot of bang for your buck, white tea will probably do it for you. Green tea is different in that it is um the preparation is different and it also is uh, the difference between like japanese green tea and chinese green tea is often very different ika pika hey supposed to be sleeping right now but daddy owl is talking about tea hey how's college going for you oh do i ever put things in my tea like fresh fruit or jelly not with the tea that we're talking about today that, that's not the sort of tea that I typically drink, and that's not what I'm going to be talking about. Green tea is often uh, lasts for fewer steeps, but is goddamn delicious. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, well, I should say uh, it does last for fewer steeps, but the the flavor is often stronger. And... It depends on what kind of tea you're talking about. Um, varies widely. Uh, green. So, for example, uh, the Japanese green tea that I think a lot of people think about when they think of green tea is Sencha. Sencha is 
good for, I would say, about three steeps most of the time, and then the flavor is gone. In fact, if you like Japanese green tea, which is, again, utterly delicious. I love Sencha. It's, it's a treat. Usually, I like to steep it at like 140 degrees or something like that. First steep is 30 seconds. Second steep is a minute and 30 seconds. Third steep is 45 seconds. And then you're done. Like, that is how Sencha works. <laughs> And that's not a bad thing. Again, like, every tea is unique and different, and you like what you like. Um, but I, I will tell you guys about how I tend to prepare my tea to get the most out of it. Uh, how do you store your tea? Um, we're, when we get into the practicalities of tea, we'll get into that. Uh, but right now, I just want to talk about the different kinds of teas to, to help you all pick out what... If, if you want to get into tea, I want to help you figure out what kind of tea you would like to start with. But I do have some beginner recommendations that I'll get to. Um, so green tea, it varies widely. It doesn't last for as many steeps, but there are so many different kinds of tea. There are some green teas that are flavored with jasmine. That is very common in China, especially. It's still in an administration process, so I can watch until the studies class start. Hey, I'm glad you can make it. We, we will miss you. I'm going to mispronounce this horribly. Have you ever had Heishang Shi? Herbal tea. I'm not. Um, I don't drink a lot of herbal teas, I'm afraid. I've had the green jasmine ball tea. Oh, jasmine dragon. Jasmine dragon is easily some of like some of my favorite tea. Jasmine dragon is special. Um, because they take uh, green tea leaves and then they wrap them up with jasmine. Um, sometimes, or they just flavor it with jasmine, and then these little balls of tea start to unfurl. It's especially good because when they roll the tea leaves up into balls like that, like they hand roll them, uh, it, pra it practically guarantees that the tea leaves will be whole. And generally, tea leaves that are whole are going to be of higher quality and just taste better. But if, you, if any of you can get your hands on jasmine dragon tea, hard recommend. It is one of the teas that got me into tea in the first place. But again, kind of hard to talk about green tea as one large entity because it varies so widely. Oolong tea also varies extremely widely. Um, comes in two main forms. Um, just normal. I don't even know what you would call it. Normal and bald. So Oolong, and then this is actually where we're going to start getting into my recommendations. If you are interested into getting into tea and don't like the fact that tea is bitter, get yourself some Oolong that is rolled up into uh, balls. So in fact, let me give you some recommendations. Let me see. Stephen Smith. They're Ali Shan Oolong. Let me let me see. Ooh. Wait a minute. Do they just straight <gasps> Oh my god. Do they Do they liter do they literally just have orchid fragrance? <gasps> oh yeah, it's it's their Phoenix. Oh, did they just rename their uh Phoenix Oolong? I wonder. I think it I think it might just be the same stuff that they were talking about. Let me see. How much is it? Let's see, 0.7 7 ounces, which is how many grams? Hold on. 0.7 ounces to grams, which is like 20 grams. So 20 grams for 25. That's pretty expensive. Anyway. Let me find the tea that I was talking about, though. So teas, oolong. For some reason, they lump uh, oolong and pu'er together. Hugo Tima, thank you so much for the sub. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> You're the nicest kind of connoisseur I've heard. Aw, is that... <laughs> what do you mean? Here we go. Here's the Ali Shan oolong. I, if you are interested in getting into tea and you don't like the bitterness of tea, 
this tea right here is a fantastic place to start. It is, oh yeah, it's relatively cheap, relatively. Um, it is almost impossible to fuck up. And it, it lasts like for a lot of steeps, like maybe 10 or more. So look at the way that these leaves are prepared. You can see, um, I am not sponsored. <laughs> if, if I were to be sponsored by like the tea trade, the tea trade council, I'd take it. I would take that sponsorship. But you see the way that these tea leaves are kind of like clumped up into these balls like this. Any tea that looks like this is going to be very easy to brew. It almost never is bitter. And it almost always is good. And another thing that like my per and this is all just personal experience, but any teas from Taiwan are good. Like, I don't think I've ever had a bad Taiwanese tea. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. They're just so like the, the people in Taiwan just know how to make really good tea. I was obsessed with Gen Mai Cha when I was in Japan. Yeah, okay, going back to the to the list, uh, Gen Mai Cha is a kind of green tea. It, it, it's specifically a flavored green tea with a very funny history. Back in the day when um, you had teas that, you know, the the nobles, right? The, the nobles all got really nice sencha tea while the... Um, you know, the commoners still got tea, but a lot of their tea was, you know, not as high quality. And they specifically, um, one thing that they started to do was add filler to their tea. Um, specifically, they would use roasted rice, which adds a really nice roasty flavor to it. Um, however, pe the, the people just kind of started to notice, hey, wait a minute, this is pretty tasty. So... <laughs> So eventually, even the nobles started drinking it, like this sencha tea with like roasted rice as filler, um, and it adds this lovely flavor to it, and that's called Genmai Cha. It's another tea that's really good if you're looking to get into tea. If you really want to try like Japanese teas, um, if you're a Japanophile and you want to do it the, the Japanese way, then uh, Genmai Cha is a really good place to start. Again, very difficult to screw up. How long should monk shit tea need fermenting? Uh, well, the good news is that all the fermenting happens in the gut of the monk. <laughs> Making sure they eat lots of burritos helps. Anyway, um, hard recommend on the Alishan. Really good way to start with tea. Any tea that looks like this, though, is going to be very easy to brew. Yeah, um, they also tend to last for um, a lot of steeps. So let's go back. Let's go back here. Uh, whoops, I screwed that up and bald. So this is a sort of balled up oolong. But then if we look over at, for example, like this, the orchid fragrance tea, which is crazy expensive. Uh, you know what? Wow, they only sell them in these tiny packs, which makes sense. Any orchid fragrance tea... Um, like this is a very, very special kind of tea. Um, with this kind of tea, I like to have, you know, about four grams. So this is about four bucks whenever you want to brew this kind of tea for a day. And this kind of tea will last you all day, right? Like I, w when I have this kind of tea, I am drinking it all day. That's, but even then, right? Like, I'm talking about drinking tea leaves all day and still spending four bucks. That you are getting way more beverage out of it than, like, if you were to drink two sodas, if the sodas were, like, two bucks a pop. Haha, <laughs> two bucks a pop. Pop. So tea, like, even on the expensive end, tea is, compared to, like, soda or, like, alcoholic beverages, like beer... It's a very cheap habit, comparatively. So it's it's lighter. Even the expensive stuff is lighter on your wallet. 
There are a lot of reasons to get into tea, partially because it's hydrating, partially because it's delicious, partially because it's cheaper than a lot of other um, beverages. But yeah, this this that that's the difference here. So you have like these kinds of teas, these sorts of oolongs are more difficult to brew. Uh, because you need to get the temperature just right, and you need to get the amount of tea right, and the steep time right. Often you're just steeping for a couple of seconds. Um, so if you're worried about messing up the tea, if you're if you're new and you're worried about screwing up, start with this kind of stuff. Another good example, actually, let me let me find it real quick. Is let me find it. Here we go, Tao of Tea. Another recommendation is, oh, please open. Please. Please. Hey, there we go. Okay, perfect. This is a tea from the Tao of Tea. Again, see the shape of the tea leaf. It's that balled up shape. Um, again, very easy to brew, lasts for quite a while. Wait a minute, is this from Taiwan? <laughs> also from Taiwan. See what I mean? Just across the board, Taiwanese tea is just so good. Ah. You sound like my friend when she got me into cross stitch. If you look at the cost versus time, it's actually a pretty cheap hobby overall. <laughs> also, tea is just healthier. Saw a few oolong teas that also mentioned green in their name. Yeah, if you notice an oolong tea has the word like green describing it, then that usually means that it's a little bit less processed than other oolong teas, and you'll get a... not a lighter flavor, but a, a brighter flavor, usually. Um, more refreshing, I would say. Like, green oolongs are more refreshing. Is tea healthier than cross-stitch? Depends how much you stab yourself cross-stitching. <laughs> Is there a way to keep grounded leaf leftovers out of the tea? Yes, um, there are actually ways to do that. And in fact, why don't we take a minute and look at some stuff? Okay, you know what? Let me just finish real quick. Black tea um, also varies widely. Um often likes flavoring. So if, if if you are going to have a tea, if you want sugar in your tea or cream in your tea, black tea is the way you want to go because flavoring doesn't work for white, green, or oolong teas. Then black tea is, um, for example, Assam. Assams like having uh, cream in them. So it, it just depends. Like, it, when you think of an English tea as well, you're thinking of black teas. So any English tea is going to be a black tea. Inevitably. Anyway, uh, someone was asking, yeah, so how, how do, like, I bet a lot of you are wondering now, how do I get started? What do I need to start brewing tea? Well, if I can give a recommendation, I am going to show you all the tools that I use every day to make tea. There are actually a couple ways you can go, uh, the, but the what I would personally recommend... I'm going to find it for you all real quick. Let's see if they actually have it in stock, because they might not. Let me see. Guy one. If we're lucky. Hey, it's in stock! You guys might want to jump on this. This is the guy wand that I use literally every day. It is relatively cheap, 25 bucks. And it's fantastic. The construction of the guy wand also means that you're not going to burn your hands. I have another guy wand that actually is more expensive, but I never use it because um, the way the lid is designed, it, uh, it heats up. The lid too much like you can see right here you actually can grab the guy wand with one hand now you might be wondering like how do you use the guy wand well 
it's actually pretty simple. I personally really like Guy Wan's. This is a um, this is a Chinese method of making tea. What you uh, it it uh, it combines the two best parts of um, the two things that I think make you the best tea. First of all, it uh, it gives a whole bunch of room to the tea leaves because this is just an empty cup with a lid. Like Guy Wan is just like cup with lid in Chinese. <laughs> and then you can see there's also a bit on the bottom. So you just put, put the tea leaves in the cup, you pour the hot water in, then you put the lid on top and you just make a little crack at the edge and use the lid to strain out the tea leaves. So Guy Wan's um, combine the two best things that you can do to brew tea. The first is it gives lots of room for the water to percolate around the tea leaves. That's very important. That's why, um, in general, infusers are not the best choice because they limit the amount of water that can actually flow around the tea leaf. So, you know, the, the steep isn't as good. It's not, um, you, you just want as much water uh, moving around the tea leaves as possible. Then, um, the Gaiwan also allows you to dump the resulting tea very quickly. The problem with teapots that you sometimes run into is teapots take a while to actually pour all of the tea out. And especially when you're talking about teas that only want to be brewed for like five seconds, because that is a thing. If some of, the, like when you are pouring out the tea, some of it is uh, still steeping while the rest of it is like being poured out. So some water is actually still in the pot, you know, like longer. So some of the water is actually being seeped for like 10 or 15 seconds, while some of the rest is five seconds and you can end up with a bitter brew. That's why for nice teas like this orchid fragrance, a guy Wan is almost necessary because otherwise it's going to get very bitter very quickly. So I would personally recommend a Guy Wan. Again, very cheap. The way you use it, you just put your fingers underneath. Like you put your fingers underneath and grab it from below. Then you put your thumb on top on the lid. Then you just pour it into a cup or into a little pitcher that you can get. Yeah. Very simple. Very, very simple. Guy Wands are also really good for a particular method of brewing that I really like. Uh, so you know what? I'm going to make a little page about this. Whoops. Um, so two methods of brewing. First, uh, now if, if you want to brew tea, you can use a Guy Wand, but you can also use a teapot if you would like. I personally recommend Guy Wan's, but I will show. I will, I will explain both ways. First, you have uh, the Western method. So, in the Western method, you have a small amount of leaves and long steep times, often ten to fifteen minutes. Like, or actually, it's more like sometimes you have five. Sometimes they tell you, like, steep for five minutes. Now, what are the traits of the Western method? Um, well, the biggest thing is it's stronger. Even though you're using fewer leaves, you are leaving them in for a very long time. So all of the flavor comes out at once. Um, very complicated flavor because you're basically just extracting all of the flavor out of the leaf at once. That's the idea. You're getting all of the flavor, and this is often why you need a sweetener, because it's going to be uh, more bitter. Not, not super bitter. It still shouldn't be super bitter. You shouldn't have to use sweetener just to make it palatable, ever. Uh, sweetener should be a choice, not a necessity. So if it's just too bitter, then you need to adjust it. You need to adjust how you're making the tea. And every tea is going to have something different that it wants. So it's stronger, very complicated flavor. Um, one or two steeps. 
But then there's a another method that actually was developed uh, like 250 years ago or something called uh, Gong Fu. The idea behind Gong Fu, what was this? 22, whatever. The idea behind Gong Fu is you want to um, use lots of leaves, very short, steep time. Um, one, so there are a couple of reasons that Gong Fu is nice. Um, sometimes, because this is what I typically do with my tea leaves, you, um, you can steep the same leaves all day. Uh, very short steep time, um, less complicated flavors, and this kind of needs qualification because less complicated isn't necessarily a bad thing. With the Western method, oftentimes a lot of the subtler flavors um, get drowned out by the stronger flavors. Um, So the subtler flavors get to shine because in the where in the Western method, the subtler flavors might be drowned out in the Gong Fu method. A lot of them can um, can stand out more. Plus flavor changes over time because the more you steep it, some flavors are going to start being accentuated and other flavors are going to um, start to fade away. So the. Uh, the advantage, there are a lot of advantages to Gong Fu, and this is what I personally like, especially with good teas. So, for example, um, a really good example of this is actually um, one of my favorite teas. Let me show you all um, my favorite tea real quick. My favorite white tea from Denong. They typically, they mostly make poor teas, but let me see. Here we go. It's a 2018 white tea. Or wait, is this it? No, 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 this is different. Um, let me go back. This is it. Found it. This is my personal favorite white tea ever. Unbelievably good. Now, something you might say is, wow, like 27 bucks for only 30 grams of tea, that's, that's, not very much. The thing about white tea is that you actually don't necessarily, you don't want as many leaves in in there because they're not very dense. Um, they, they're very dried out. They're, they're not terribly voluminous. You don't need nearly as much. But yeah, um, uh, the nice thing about white tea is you start like with this tea, for example, I start at like 160, 170 degrees, depending on how I'm feeling on the day. Um, I'll stream, I'll, I'll not stream. I'll steep it for like, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds, then dump it. And then as the flavor starts to wane, I will increase the temperature of the water and then new flavors start to come out. So as I drink the tea, new flavors are starting to reveal themselves throughout the day. So the tea actually changes. It's cool. And you can do this with a lot of different teas. So that's, that's what I mean when I say the flavor changes over time. You can, uh, with some teas, you can increase the temperature and uh, get new flavors. It's cool. Okay, I am... Oh, you know what? Before we go to break, somebody asked what you can do to get rid of any like little bits of tea leaves. Let me see if Tao of Tea has anything like that. Let me see. Let me just get rid of that. Let's see. Do, 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 do. No. 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 Hello? No. 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 Just lots of teapots. Gosh. Lots of teapots. Hello? Huh. They don't have it. 
Let me think. I think I got my strainer from Young Mountain. Let me look. So let's see. T where? There we go. This was actually my first set. Uh, this this cup right here, I still use this cup. This is also twenty five bucks. So this comes with a little steeper and a cup. Let's see. Oh, I didn't get it from them. Where did I get it? Well, you can just get a strainer. Like that, that is basically what you can do. Just pour the tea through a strainer and it'll get rid of most of the bits. Pretty simple. Stop give, telling me to give you my email. I already, I already buy so much stuff from you guys. <laughs> Right, so I would personally recommend this, where you just steep the same leaves over and over and over again, you use more. Now, it has been an hour, so I'm going to say what I always say. Everyone, get up, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, get yourself a sippy, and I'll see you all in just a few minutes, and we're going to keep talking about tea. And when we come back, I am going to talk specifically about how to get started with steeping teas. So I'll be right back. Ah, I have the old one. Hold on, I can change that. I can do this. Wait for it. Okay. And then that's not centered. There we go. Oh, music is not by wall. There we go. <laughs> okay, be right back. Thank you. 
Ah, hello. I'm back. I hope at least some of you took the opportunity to get up and take care of yourselves a little bit. What did everyone get to sip? I'm curious, because I, I mentioned earlier, I'm sipping a, um, a green tea flavor with a uh, jasmine flower, which is lovely. One of my favorite kinds of tea. I desperately need to get more jasmine dragon again, because you really do not need a lot of tea leaves for <laughs> to steep jasmine dragon. Yerba mate, valid. Kiwi pineapple white tea. Oh dear. I've noticed that um, sometimes white tea gets flavored with really sweet stuff like that. And it's it's kind of funny. I think that the white tea is sort of an excuse to make a like some sort of flavored tea. <laughs> Black cherry sparkling water. Valid. Beer and painkillers. Hmm. I'm not a doctor, but bong water tea <laughs> appy juice i'm eepy liquid death just sparkling water it's like <laughs> sparkling water is the flavor of your tongue dying korean red ginseng tea hmm. interesting i've never had that before no sippy doing your nails i'm glad i can keep you company while you're doing your nails The last of my, uh, of my long Lu Maofeng green tea. Ah, yeah, that's something that I didn't mention. But Co uh, Korean green tea is also really good sometimes. A uh, hard recommend on that. That's weakling talk. I'm teasing. I like sparkling water. Just hopped in after I saw someone got me a ticket to the bonus bean room. Oh. <laughs> Owls of a feather. I'm sipless. Go and get yourself some water at the very least. Please stay hydrated. Now is really a time to be looking after yourself. All but with everything going on. Okay. Well. Shall we continue? I'm trying to think, like, what... You know what? Let's talk about how to brew tea now, because we've talked a little bit about the different kinds of tea. And by the way, if you are actually curious about getting specific teas to start with, I'm just going to be sharing a whole bunch of them later in the stream. So if you want to like actually throw money at, at uh, some tea makers and buy their tea, I'll give you all some recommendations. Uh, some good tea, some teas that are really good uh, to start with. No leaves, no bitches. No leaves, no bitches, baby. And Theo, I did mention that earlier. Uh, oolong is a good starter, specifically the bald oolongs. Getting the whole Skillshare course, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's talk a little bit about how to steep tea. Like, let's suppose that we're going to go with the Gong Fu method. Now, the Western method is pretty straightforward, but let's talk about the three factors that go into steeping tea. So, three factors of s steeping tea. One, and this is the most important amount of leaves now the depending on the kind of tea that you are making this is going to vary widely salted caracal mood of the hundred bits to say crab 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 now the leaves are the most, I, I would argue, the amount of leaves, like all of these are really important, but the amount of leaves are going to determine a lot. You want to be careful because sometimes people will tell you to put absolutely ridiculous amounts of leaves in the gaiwan, but the ratio that you use will determine a lot. Now, the gaiwan that I recommended to all of you is about half a cup. 20 bits to say frog. Frog? Frog. 
This is going to vary on depending on the kind of tea. So for example, with a white tea, I might use three grams. Whereas with uh, my ripe poor teas, I really like seven grams. So lots and lots of tea leaves for that sometimes, sometimes. But the biggest thing, like, and this is something that I'm going to reiterate over and over and over again. Everything has to be tailored to your taste. You are going to get a tea and you're going to try steeping it a certain way and you're going to say, oh, that's pretty good, but I don't know. I feel like there's something missing. Maybe the flavor is a little weak. Now, here's what I will say. If you feel like the flavor is a little bit weak or you're not getting all of the different kinds of flavors that you could, um, then you need more temperature. But if there's just not enough flavor at all, you probably just need to add more leaves. And again, this is going to vary with my unballed oolongs. I, and just with my oolongs, I like to do like four grams a lot of the time. With my ripe poor, it's more like seven. With my white teas, it's like three grams, maybe two and a half even sometimes. But experiment. Like this is, tea is absolutely something that you need to experiment with to figure out what is going to be best for you. Korean red ginseng tastes kind of savory. That's not uncommon. Some teas are rather savory. And I mentioned this before, but I do not sweeten my teas. The teas that I'm talking about today, no, no sweeteners. I'm teaching you how to make the tea in a way that the tea itself is just good. So amount of leaves is the first thing that you have under your control when you're steeping tea leaves. The second thing is temperature of the water. This is massively important. And I think a lot of people just bore, but just pour boiling water onto tea leaves and call it a day. That is a really good way to get a bitter brew because tea at the end of the day, brewing tea is chemistry. And you like when you are brewing tea, you are taking on the role of chemist. So you want to make sure that your parameters are good. So the amount of tea leaves you have will determine, and so let's talk about it in terms of chemistry. The amount of leaves determines how much chemical is available. The temperature of the water determines which chemicals are getting pulled out of the tea leaves and at what rate. So the reason that you want to be careful about using water that's too hot is because if the water is too hot, you are going to be pulling out more different kinds of chemicals. So, and that especially includes the tannins, which make the tea bitter. A little bit of bitterness in a tea can add an extra dimension to the flavor. Too much will ruin the brew because you should never be taking a sip of tea and grimacing. If you take a sip of tea and you grimace, there is something wrong with the way that you prepared it. That or it's just really shitty tea. <laughs> like, or, <laughs> But the teas that I'm showing you today are all going to be good. What did you just come watch? Um, I'm literally just rambling about tea for three hours. The third parameter is steep time. How long you leave the tea leaves in the water. This determines how much of the chemicals get pulled out into the water. Because like I mentioned, the temperature of the water determines which chemicals are getting pulled out of the tea leaves and at what rate, the steep time determines how much of those chemicals actually gets pulled out into the water. So again, um, so amount of tea leaves, amount of chemical. Temperature of the water determines which chemicals steep time determines how much chemical and what you are going to be doing when you are trying a new tea is you are going to be fucking around with these three parameters until you find the precise kind that you like and in order to keep all of this in your head i'd recommend keeping a tea journal record your like it, it again it's like chemistry a chemist is going to keep notes of how they um of like what changes they make and how uh 
how they perform their chemistry experiments. In the same way, it's really useful to keep a tea journal uh, with each kind of tea that you are trying and note what different changes uh, do to the leaves. You don't have to. You certainly don't have to. But I'd recommend it. Especially if you're just getting started and you really want to figure out how to make your tea just right. How do you heat water to a precise temperature? Well, um, you either can get a kettle that can heat the water to a specific temperature or just use a thermometer. Like heat the water up and then wait for it to cool until it hits the temperature that you want. That's what I did. Perfect excuse to buy a cute journal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just keep a page or a couple of pages on each tea and record the changes. Now, here are some personal recommendations that I am going to give. Because you can, after a long time of, of just absolutely ruining tea, because <laughs> that's going to happen sometimes. I'm going to give you some really good beginner teas that are hard to completely mess up, but you're probably going to mess up. Like, you are going to make tea, and you're going to say to yourself, you know, this could have been better. And then you're going to experiment, and you're going to find it, and then you're going to learn how to make your favorite teas in the perfect way, and it's going to ruin every other kind of beverage for you. <laughs> because that's just how tea is. Now... Again, the amount of leaves determines the amount of the chemical. If you feel like there is not enough flavor, just add more leaves. And different people will like different things. You have to find what you personally like. Tea is a very personal thing. The temperature of the water. Now, if you find that the tea is really bitter, then you probably are using too hot of water. Every tea is going to want a different temperature, and it is up to you to determine what that temperature is. You are going to have to play around. Uh, here's a really good example, actually. I, in fact, I'm going to show you an example. So, Chi Fine Teas. Let's look at their website real quick. Chi Fine Teas specialize in super expensive nice teas let me find like in particular like look if you really want to just go all out and have some of like the best tea you have ever had in your life chi fine teas is where you want to go obscenely expensive but obscenely delicious it's like candy it's crazy but this stuff so for example a 50 uh again a dollar per gram very expensive, but unbelievably good. However, you have really got to make sure that you are making this tea correctly. And personally, with these kinds of teas, on the rare occasion that I make them, um, I like to use four grams, four grams of tea leaves. So that's four bucks for a day's worth of tea, because you will be seeping these tea leaves all day. Really good, really, really good tea leaves, especially oolongs, should last you all day. Just steeping them over and over and over and over again. But they recommend, I, th I think that they recommend, yeah, boiling water. I'm going to tell you this right now. I tried it. Horrible. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. But... I started experimenting. I, yeah, people will spend more on a single soft drink. Exactly. That's why I'm saying even the expensive end of tea is going to be cheaper than a lot of sodas. Like, uh, it's cheaper than a soda habit. So if you want to save money, but still want to have, like, tasty water, tasty hydration, tea's a good way to go. So I started experimenting, and I actually found... I like to steep this tea at 180 degrees, and I've actually talked with the people at Chi Fine Teas. Um, they were kind enough to send me samples to have on on stream a while ago when I was um, when I was steeping tea on, and just sipping tea on stream. I talked with them and I said, you know, what? I just can't I can't steep these teas at boiling, and they were like, that's valid. 
like they it's not like they got on my ass for it they, they were just like yeah if, if you don't like it that way so look my point is the distributors aren't going to be offended you have to experiment and find what you like also this is pretty cool I'm just going to show this off real quick. And I know that this is a very fractured stream, but this is super self-indulgent. I just, I'm just sharing tea. This is cool. Lightning struck this tree in the late 1970s, destroying part of it and forever changing the flavor of the tea from the rest of it. This tea is not only quite strong for a high-quality Phoenix Mountain Oolong, but can be brewed more times as well. The lightning strike is attributed to these fine qualities. We have tea from a tree grown out of the cuttings of the original tree available at our store and on our website. Of course there's a difference in the trees in the original and first generation trees, but it is far less than the astronomical difference in price. <laughs> I, I actually, I've had this tea. It is very, very good. Uh, hard recommend on it. Beautiful, beautiful uh, trees as well. Anyway, <laughs> fun little thing. Yeah, lightning mutated oolong. The lightning strike altered the tea. What buffs do you get? Uh, I find uh, extra mana and extra mana regen. That's what I tend to get from it. Anyways, you will say, I, I always shy away from tea because I know it has this complex ritualistic history. It's intimidating. Don't be intimidated. It really is just about experimentation. Tea is personal in the sense, like there are a whole bunch of different rituals around it, but at the end of the day, it's just leaf water. And you have to make it how you like. It's tasty. It tastes good. So don't let that ritual um, make you shy away from it. No one's going to get mad at you for not saying the right words before you make the tea. Just enjoy your leaf water. Right, so I was saying, the temperature of the water, like, they might they might say on the, on, you know, the website or on the label, hey, steep it at this temperature, but oftentimes the temperatures that they recommend are on the high end. I would recommend even starting le lower so that you, b because if you steep the tea leaves at too high of a temperature, it affects, like, it's really hard to go back. Like you, you can't undo too high of a temperature because if it's too bitter due to the temperature, it's going to be bitter for all of the later steeps as well, unfortunately. So I would recommend uh, starting a little bit lower than where you think. And then if it, if you're not quite getting all of the flavors that you want, then you can up the temperature. You can always up it a little bit later. Now, if it's too bitter, then you probably... Like, it is possible you added too many leaves, but if... Um, but it probably is the temperature of the water, especially if you're getting started. The steep time... If you steep it for too long, oftentimes it will have an astringent quality. So for example, let's, I'm sure you all have sort of felt this on your mouth where like your tongue, it like you drink a tea and then your tongue like sticks to the roof of your mouth a little bit and it's bitter, like bitterness is part of that astringency, but it like, it makes your teeth almost sticky. It's unpleasant. Um, that often means that you steeped the tea for too long. So you need to cut back on how long you're steeping it. Especially if you're doing Gong Fu, most of the time when I'm steeping my tea leaves in Gong Fu, I'm doing like, yeah, t uh, dry tongue. If you get a dry tongue, then it's oftentimes steep time. Yeah, pe people are getting it. I will say that usually when I am steeping almost any tea in my Gaiwan, I'm only steeping it for like 5, 10, max, like 15 or 20 seconds. You are doing very short steeps in quick succession. That's the idea. That is generally the idea behind it. It also means that you're less likely to mess it up. You just like pour the water in and then you quickly pour it out. 
it it allows for a lot of experimentation too. Gong Fu is great when you're getting started because you get to make lots of tea. You and you get to try things over and over again. Oh, you hate the dry tongue feeling, so that's why I'm doing wrong with that specific tea. Yeah. Again, bagged teas. And like, I cannot emphasize this enough. In almost every single case, bagged teas are just going to be worse. To the point that I'm not even sure it's worth it. Like, you just get kind of gross water. Especially when it's like not flavored. Like, the reason that you have so many flavored bagged teas is because they know that the tea is shit. And they have to cover that up. But if you're getting loose leaf tea and making it in a guy wand, there is no comparison. The difference, like, and I, I'm not just saying this because I'm a little bit of a tea snob. It's because the, the difference in flavor is astronomical. There is no comparison. You like bagged tea and loose leaf tea are two completely different worlds. Yeah, <laughs> lots of people are asking about herbal teas. I don't drink a lot of herbal teas. It's just not my thing. Not so much. It is nice to keep chamomile on hand and then add some honey to it. If like you want some tea late at night or you're sick, chamomile with honey is lovely for when you're sick. Um, also, actually, my parents grow uh, mint. And uh, my brother and his wife will take some of that mint and dry it and make it into mint tea, which is really su it's sweet and it's delicious. So again, like herbal tea is not bad. That's just not what I personally tend to drink very much. Yeah, rubos tea is interesting. Um, rubos kind of needs milk and honey, though, if you ask me personally, that's how I feel. But I don't drink a lot of teas that take flavorings. Huh, <sighs> okay. Anyway, I got off track, I think. Um, but please, like, I would steer, I would... <sighs> Bagged tea is just not good. Okay? Like, I, I'm giving you all the information that I can to help you make, um, help you pick out and steep teas well and if you motherfuckers watch this stream go out and like buy a bag of tea and drink it and you come back and you're like wow fred that was gross what am i doing wrong i'm just gonna slap you ah <laughs> uh. okay anyway <laughs> Let's see. What else? Uh, record your steeps and experiment. This is one of the most important things about tea is you have to experiment to figure out what you like. Maybe someone comes up and says, hey, uh, like, hey, I'm um, like, let's suppose it's too bitter. Right? It's like, okay, I need to bring the temperature down. You bring it down 10 degrees and you're like, wow, it's still better. Maybe you need to bring the temperature down even more. Maybe you bring the temperature temperature way down and you're like, oh, wow, this is still bitter. What am I doing wrong? Well, maybe the steep time is off. And again, if you're gong fuing tea, five, 10 second steeps are the norm, especially when you're starting. Now, once you're like eight steeps in on some of these teas, they're gonna start losing their flavor. Then you want to up the temperature and the steep time. And you're just going to feel it out. And the more tea you drink, the better you'll be able to feel it out. Like you'll you'll be drinking a cup of tea. Maybe you're on the fifth steep and you're like, oh, this is this is still good. But I can tell that the flavor is starting to wane a little bit. So I'm just going to up the temperature for the next steep. That is what I do all the time. Every, especially when you're gong fuing, every single steep is going to be a little bit different. And that's okay. Like, every single sip is going to be different. And you, you appreciate that you appreciate the steep that you got. And then you keep going. It's kind of like, um, 
some of the philosophy behind shakuhachi playing. Every sound that you make is a completely new sound that no one has ever made before. So appreciate it. Appreciate the beauty in it. And the fleeting nature of it. What does gong fu tea taste like? Gong fu is just a method of steeping. There's no kind of tea called gong fu. <laughs> have I made an international standard cup of tea yet? I don't think I personally... No, you know what? I have. Because I went to a tea festival. That's when I really started getting into tea. I went to a tea festival uh, with a friend. And they had a class um, about uh, tea tasting. And when you are trying to like do an official style tea tasting you you brew an international standard cup of tea it's not very pleasant it's not good like <laughs> making an international standard cup of tea sucks most of the time it's bitter and astringent but i recommend using gong fu with monk shit tea yeah I mean, how else are you going to appreciate the many different earthy notes? <laughs> huh. Okay. Oh, you like the David's brand? Uh, is that? Oh, no, I was thinking of Stephen Smith. Yeah, again, tea bags, not going to do it. Okay, let's see. We've got about 20 minutes before the next break. If you guys have questions, please tell me. Like, let, let's take 20 minutes to just, like, take questions. If you, like, if you want to get into tea and you, if you have a question about it, please let me know. You can suck on the tea bag when it's done. Who hurt you? What sort of water do I use for my tea? I tend to just use filtered water. So just get a water filter, even if the water in your area is good. Eh, I, I'd still recommend using the filter. It'll um, make for water that is less affected by like the, the minerals in the pipes. Salted Caracal Muda with a hundred bits to say suck on these. True tea enjoyed eat raw leaves. Some people actually do eat the leaves. I don't, but <laughs> some people do. They have this one black tea with glitter stars that turn the tea spark. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, it's so goofy. Chunks of citrus peel and large sugar crystals in the blend. Jesus Christ. Like, they'll, like, some people will do anything to cover up the fact that the tea that they're using is shit. <laughs> it, look, if they're going to those lengths, then th they're probably just covering up that the tea leaves they're using are shit. That's another thing that's kind of um, important to look at. Try to see what the distributor is like doing with the growers because a lot of tea growers are um, taken advantage of. And there are actually some uh, tea distributors that specifically are fair trade. Uh, Young Mountain Tea, especially, um, I would recommend as fair trade. They work uh, very closely with... Um, with their growers. Try to find uh, tea distributors that work closely with their growers. That's what I'd recommend. A nice Earl Grey is nice sometimes. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with Earl Grey. Um, I guess I'm just into tea in a way that is different from, like, I think a lot of people see tea, which is the English person in front of a fireplace in a big padded chair. <laughs> That's, I'm not quite that kind of person. Adagio, I don't have great experiences with Adagio. I feel like like all their teas are flavored. The quality of the tea that they use is kind of eh. You can you can get better for the same price. 
That's been my experience with them. They do have a nice lemongrass, but again, like that's herbal tea. Like anyone, anyone and their mom can make a decent herbal tea. Is there a ratio of leaves to water? Um, it depends on the tea. It absolutely depends. I would say like I make it, I, I make my tea in about half cup amounts, a little bit more than half cup. Um, and for white tea, I'll use between two and a half and three grams, depending on how I'm feeling that day. Oolong, it's more like four grams. Uh, right poor, I'll use like up to seven grams of tea, like six or seven. Again, depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, that's right poor. Uh, black tea, again, it's like another like three grams because black tea is so strong. Any site recommendations? Uh, we're going to get into that at the um, like after the break. Because I will be spending time showing you all of the teas that I recommend uh, in just a little bit. Do I use a scale? Yes. I would highly recommend getting a scale that can measure in hundredths of a gram. There are a few. Hold I got mine on Amazon for like 15 or 20 bucks or something. They can be very cheap. Just get, just get, like, get, get a weed scale. Like, unironically, get a weed scale. They're really good for measuring tea. <laughs> That's what I use. Okay, I, I explained this on Mike's stream a while ago, I think, but I have a scale for measuring tea, and when I got it, I was so surprised because I went to the store page on Amazon because uh, that's where I got recommended to. I, I don't... I That is, like, the only thing I have bought on Amazon in the last, like, five years. Like, I... Like, Amazon suck. Like stay away i i try not to support amazon i know i say that and i'm on twitch i understand the irony of this um, but i try not to buy off of amazon um because i'm not happy with the way that their workers are treated and there goes my partnership <laughs> Um, but I remember looking up the page for the scale and depicted was a woman me measuring a fat butt of weed, like massive butt, <laughs> absolutely huge. I love it. It was so funny. Yeah, based. Yeah. Ralsi class. Yeah. Enough to <laughs> to satiate Ralsi. Yeah, Amazon doesn't give a shit. Yeah, I can say all the shit I like about Amazon. They're just like, meh. They're too big anyway. Avoiding Amazon is pretty hard sometimes. Yeah, it's true. It blows. But yeah, any more questions about tea? I am I I am happy to answer them. You know what? Uh, someone did ask about um, about a tea to start with. I'm going to go back and I'm I, I already recommended it, but I'm going to show it again. The Ali Shan Oolong is a great starter. This right here from Stephen Smith Tea Makers. Like uh, we're going to, I, I'm going to go into detail about some of the teas that I love that I think would be really good for someone starting out with tea in like, like after the break in 15 minutes. But again, this is a great tea. The reason that it's such a great starter tea is because, well, there are a lot of reasons. First of all, it's almost impossible to screw up. Second, like, which means that it's almost impossible to make bitter. You'd have to steep it. You have to like leave the water in for 10 minutes or something to ruin this tea. But the like this tea is it's also very visually appealing because the tea leaves unfurl. Over time, like as you continue to steep them, the, the tea leaves unfurl and you can actually get a good look at the tea leaves themselves. It's cool. Um It's, uh, it also has a very full flavor, which is very floral. I think it has some of my favorite um, aspects of oolong teas in it. It's a, it's very representative of a lot of oolong teas of its kind. So if you like how this, 
how this oolong uh, tastes, then you can get similar oolongs and expect a fairly similar result uh, with some uh, slight changes in the tasting notes. Oh, Lost in Bokeh has been subbed for two months now. Thank you so much. They say, we a second month of bonus beans. You're goddamn right. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> I would actually uh, steer people away from Tivana, not because the tea is bad, but for two particular reasons. Uh, the first is it tends to be overpriced. The second is I'm not happy with their practices. A while ago, I talked with someone who used to be, uh, who used to work for a tea maker, and Tivana actually was trying to buy the formula for a for a blend that this person was making, that this tea uh, tea maker was making, and the tea maker refused. Then the representatives from Tivana started talking to the un like the um the hires like the the people below the manager who like just worked for the store to try to get them to slide the recipe under the table for a bribe that was her experience so allegedly allegedly this is what tivana did <laughs> i do not want to support that that's pretty disgusting. Uh, so yeah. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the tea formuoli. <laughs> exactly. Would have taken the bribe and given them some gross tasting fucked up recipe? That's the chat option. No, um, Tivon, like, and that's, um, I, I've, I've had, I've heard a similar story from other people as well. Um, on earlier streams when I brought it up before. So yeah, uh, I don't want to support that. Not there for it. Bought the Tivana seeping device at a thrift store. Great. <laughs> don't you don't have to get those steeping devices? I just recommend getting um, a Gaiwan. Partially because those steeping devices make like two cups of tea. And it's like, I'm not going to be, I don't want to drink that much tea. Like, I, I like to, especially if you're going to gong fu, which is really good for a beginner, I think. Tivana has some good cups, though. There, Lots of places have good cups. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of places have good cups, I promise you. I promise. Tivana set up a whole sting operation to steal my recipe. Literally, that hap that, that allegedly is happening. What's the device I recommended? A guy won. Yeah, let me show you all again. Uh, T-Ware. Guy won. Specifically, uh... This is the specific one that I have that I use literally every day. This. It's 25 bucks. I also personally like white teaware because it shows off the colors of the tea that you're brewing. So it lets you appreciate it. And it's especially nice for someone who's just learning to steep tea because that white color in the, um, in the Gaiwan, and if you can get yourself a white cup as well, it allows you to look at the color and see how the color of the tea changes depending on what you are doing to the tea leaves. Again, going back, um, you can visually see how the amount of leaves, the temperature of the water, and the steep time are affecting the tea. So you have more than just the flavor to go off of. That's another reason that I recommend a white guy one. Any recommendations for poor vendors? I'm not super into poor tea, but I, you know what? I was going to share the teas that I recommend later, but I'll go ahead and share one now. Da Nang has some really good, relatively cheap, ripe poor teas. Da Nang is a great way to go. And if you want to get started, 
the the tea that convinced me to start trying out more right puer was where is it like some of these are super expensive but they also have cheaper options do they uh-oh here we go i think i was showing this off a little while ago here we go you lay right this is the 2020 this is a this is for a 357 gram cake uh this is more reasonable 100 grams for 40 bucks the the Yule is what I got that convinced me that ripe puer can be good. It's very gentle for a ripe puer tea. Now, I, I should specify what this is. So puer is like this whole strain of like tea that went off on its own and started doing its own thing. There are two kinds. There's raw, which is basically just uh, lightly oxidized and um, and dried. Then there's ripe, which has actually undergone a fermentation process. The whole idea is like 250 years ago or something, uh, someone tried using enzymes to uh, speed the process of aging along because puer is a tea that does best when it is aged. Generally, the older the puer, the better it is. The idea was speeding up that process, and it made this very earthy and rich uh, flavor. $40 for tea? For 100 grams. And like I said, I use 6 to 7 grams per steeps, and each, each time you do that, it's going to get you... How many steeps do I do for these? Like 10? 12? So that's like 6 cups. 6 cups of tea for like let's see that's 40 bucks for 100 grams so that's uh 40 cents a gram yeah it's like a couple of bucks yeah you you get a lot of tea for it yeah about the price of proper coffee yeah So, do you prepare tea mindfully and meditatively? I, it's a nice ritual. I'll, I'll say that. Um, it does help center me a little bit. I don't have a whole lot of rituals, but this is one, that's one of them, is, is um, making tea. Thinking it's like a packet of Lipton. Yeah, no, you gotta break that mindset. Any of these teas, you're going to be getting anywhere from like three to 20 or more steeps. <laughs> Like, potentially, out of them. This is the closest you're going to get to monk shit tea, by the way, is right, poor. <laughs> please, yeah, again, please, I, I understand that some people want the convenience of bagged tea, but it's, you're just going to get bad tea. It's just bad. I understand that some people just really like the aesthetic and the convenience of tea bags, but it doesn't work. Like, the vast majority of the time, it's just bad. Oh, you just, oh, you got the Nepali gold from Young Mountain. Yeah, um, Young Mountain has some good black teas. It, that's all Indian tea. Um, I think that everything from Young Mountain is Indian. And Indian teas tend to be a little bit more bitter, but the the black teas, I think the Nepali gold is, um, because I have Indies gold, which I think they discontinued, but I think the Nepali gold is very similar. Uh, very fruity sort of flavors with it. Fantastic. Thoughts on Gen Mai Cha? Gen Mai Cha is, the, is a great tea for when you just don't know what you want but you want tea. Like, <laughs> I remember for a long time, I was like, I want tea, but I'm not sure what I want. I'm just going to have some Gen Mai Cha, and it just was always the right choice. <laughs> That'll last you for like three steeps or so, but it's great. I think most folk here would know the discrepancy regarding tea quality. You say that, but I still, like, I've been explaining tea to people for the last two hours, and... People are people are still coming in and being like, I'm using a bagged tea, and it's like I I can't steer you away from ba bagged tea enough. It's not worth it. 
it's not worth the money. The berry aftertaste with Nepali gold. Yeah, okay, so if Nepal, like, I found that I really liked India's gold, but I couldn't find it anymore on the website. But if the Nepali gold is a decent uh, substitute, then I'm going to give that a try. Because I'm going to restock my tea really soon here. Are there any brands of bag tea that I like? No. <laughs> no. If there's one thing you take away, if, if, if there's one thing you take away from this stream, it's that bag tea sucks. Any recommendations or ideas for making tea at a workplace? Because at least speaking for myself, I don't have time and space. You might want to look into making iced tea and then maybe pouring a thermos of it before you go to work. Because I like a lot of teas are good iced. Give it a try. It's not something that I tend to do very much, but I'm going to try this summer, I think, a little bit more. And I'll let you know how the experiment goes. But iced tea is an option. Like, just brew the tea and, like, a, a big thing of tea in the Western style and then chill it. Um, one advantage of iced tea is that um, when you ice it, I think, like, some of the bitter flavors... Uh, more heat and less heat. Room temperature is where you're going to get the most bitterness. But I think colder teas will cut some of that bitterness fruit teas are good for icing yeah yeah i'll show you all some good fruit teas there's a particular place that i like to get my fruit teas that i found in college are you down with basic bitch loose leaf black teas like yorkshire gold or pg tips or twinings i haven't had them i'm not a bit i'm not very big on black teas they're a little bit bitter for me don't enjoy them much I'm very particular about my black teas. Oh, but I do like Lapsang Souchong, and I will be recommending a good Lapsang Souchong for all of you once I get back from break, which we should be doing right about now. What bag teas have you had? I've had, well, I mean, there's Stash. There is one bag tea that I liked uh, that I would have in college before I really got into tea. But I, re I remember the bags were... Oh, I think they might have actually been made of silk. Like, not silk, but they let the water flow a lot better than most bags. That's another problem with bag tea is they um, they pack the tea all in in one small space. But I've tried, like, just over the years, I've tried lots of different bag teas, and they just never quite enjoyed them. Black tea with strong spices. Yeah, it, black teas are best for flavoring. Can try the higher but okay bagged tea. I mean, where would I even try that? I feel like I'm, I've am i had so much loose leaf tea that at some point it's just not going to be good. Would cutting open the bag help? Well, the problem is that the bagging process breaks up the leaves into little bits until it becomes almost like a tea powder and that breaking up of the leaves is going to make the tea more bitter and all the flavor is going to come out immediately because there actually is too much surface area <laughs> already plans a tanker truck full of iced tea um yeah it, it's kind of hard to do at work like, unless you, unless you can, like, have it at your desk or something. Try to make iced tea by microwaving bottles of water. Oh, God. Mm, that's a really good way to get some chemicals in you. Storing them in the dorm freezer. I'm shocked I didn't get plastic poisoning. Yeah, geez. Well, you did. The question is... <laughs> It's, yeah, microplastics, delicious. And also just chemicals. What, um, what is it? Um, uh, I forget what the chemical is called that they kind of realized is poisonous that they used to put in a bunch of plastics. BPAs, thank you. Yeah, everyone knows except me because I'm a moron. <laughs> Idiot owl stream. Y'all don't just put the mug on the stove. It is definitely time for a break. Okay. 
everyone, it's that time. We're going to do one more. I encourage you all to stand up, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, get yourself a sippy, and I'll see you all in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm still stretching, but I saw someone in chat say, like, mention that Lipton is up, like, Lipton calls itself America's favorite tea. Lipton is America's favorite tea in the way that heart disease is America's favorite cause of death.
All right, I'm back. Is everyone ready for actual tea recommendations? If you want to get started drinking tea, let's actually start going through all of the good places to start. Now, the things that I am going to recommend for good starting teas are teas that are difficult to mess up, um, teas that have a reasonably strong flavor. So, like, because a lot of the teas that I like are very gentle, but I know that people who are just starting out in tea might have palates that are geared toward things like soda, which are extremely sweet, and so people aren't used to gentler flavors. So I'll try to pick some things that can accommodate that a little bit. Okay, that I, I think that incest commercial for um, Folgers was a joke. J just, just saying. Is that a little patronizing? I'm sorry. I, I just know that a lot of people sort of struggle um, getting into tea because it's not as sweet as soda. I'm, I'm trying to... <laughs> I promise that wasn't meant to be patronizing. Now, if... Like, I, I know that a lot of people try to use tea as a way to wean themselves off of soda. And I actually have a recommendation for this. Let me pull it up. This is a place in the college town that I went to. Like I went, I went to college at Oregon State University, and uh, there was a nice tea place that I would go to. The perfect, like they also do coffee. Um, I never got any of their coffee, but let me show you uh, the thing that these people are really good at are fruit teas. Here we go, fruit melanges. Something you will notice, like they have a lot of different uh, fruit melanges. One thing that you will notice with a lot of fruit melanges, just in general, like fruit teas, is they include hibiscus. Hibiscus is basically autopilot for making herbal teas because it's tart, it's sweet, and it... My problem is that it overpowers all of the other flavors, but there are, there are some that are very good here. This right here, the Market Fresh Fruit Melange, is so good. I was so addicted to it. It's also very cheap. If you add just like a dollop of honey to it, like to a cup of it, like it is unreasonably good. I, I was addicted to this for a while. It used to be seasonal, but I think that they... Um, I think that it is just available all the time now. And actually, I don't think it has hibiscus. Maybe that's the reason I liked it so much. Cucumber and tomato blend with apple, orange, lime, and rose hips. Rose hips are also very common. This also works well as an iced tea. I haven't personally had it as an iced tea. But it is unreasonably good. I also remember really liking, let me see if I can find it. I can recommend a lot of these. The wild strawberry was also very good. It has little bits of apple in it that you can just, like you can basically just eat all of the fruit in here. But if you are trying to use tea to wean yourself off of coffee, something like the Market Fresh Fruit Melange and the wild strawberry from Oregon Coffee and Tea are a really good place to start. Add honey. Definitely add honey. Did one of the suggested teas have tiny flamingos in it? What? Where? Oh, it does. What? Fruity flamingo. Tropical fruits are blended with gluten-free pink flamingo sprinkles. <laughs> what the shit? I didn't see this. <laughs> what? Oh, well, Cardinal, thank you so much. I'm I'm glad I can inspire. This is... <laughs> you caught me while I was looking at Flamingo Tea. That's so funny, though. 
why? I don't fucking know. But yeah, I would recommend looking at the fruit melanges for Oregon coffee and tea. They also have some good green teas, to my memory. Uh, specifically, I would recommend the Genmaicha that they have. Again, relatively cheap. 11 bucks for 4 ounces, which is... Hold on. 4 ounces to grams, that's 113 grams. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good price. They have some well-priced teas. Uh, they also have nice sencha. Um, I, especially if you like the vegetal flavors of senchas, the Icha Kariban is so tasty. I, I remember just falling in love with it for a while. Again, um, you'll want to do, like, uh, the way that I recommend is, like, 140 degrees, 30 seconds for the first steep, 130, or 130, 30 seconds for the first steep, a minute 30 for the second steep, and about 45 seconds for the third steep. Oh, hey, Brian. What's a good tea for me? I drink coffee, milk, stout, and occasionally IPAs. Let's actually go back there. If that's what you're into, I would recommend a ripe pu'er tea. And in fact, not even the Yule, because this is a very earthy flavor. I would recommend, um, ooh, I need to try the 2021 wild ripe. But yeah, their wild ripe tea. Let me see this. Yeah, here we go. This stuff is really, really good. I actually am gonna be buying more in the next few days. But I would recommend this. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh, you guys. You guys. Our wild ripe teas have always been very popular among monks worldwide. <laughs> oh, shit. I think I have a gift to give Mike. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> We crafted these teas in our new fermentation factory. <laughs> God damn it. Monk shit tea real. I w <laughs> Resulting in a taste that is pristine like the rainforest from which they originate and one that is unmistakably denong. Uh, oh God. I'm definitely going to get more of this. Uh, unironically, this is really good tea. Another good way to go if you want something really rich. And let's get one thing straight. Ripe pu'er tea is not for everyone. It is very earthy. Some ripe pu'er teas, I, I can say they taste like wood lacquer smells. You know how wood lacquer just smells really nice? Sometimes there's that little flake, like the, it doesn't taste like wood lacquer. It tastes like some, like it smells, which I mean, I like the smell, so I like it, but it also is very, or a varnish. Sorry. I'm, I'm thinking of varnish too. GG. But I, this is also really good because, um, ripe pu'er because of the enzymes used is a prebiotic. So it's good for gut health. People recommend, um, like, people recommend having this after, like, a big meal to help digest it. Also, did regular car reviews just randomly show up? Yeah, we talk, like, daily, almost daily. He's a buddy. He's a good friend. But yeah, this is what I would recommend. The 2018 Wild Ripe. You know what? Um, I'll make sure to have it when you're here. I'll order it. Yeah. Let's see, what else to get started? Um, I already recommended the Ali Sham. Let's look at what else Stephen Smith has. Cause, let's look at their oolongs. So this is very, very expensive. <laughs> yeah, the Ali Sham. Ooh, this is another one that I actually plan on restocking on very soon. The golden oolong that they have is so good. This is the, the green heart cultivar, which is very, very distinct. 
So a cultivar is just a, um, a uh, you know how I was saying they breed um, teas together. They breed tea plants. Uh, so this in particular is a very rich flavor. This is another thing that I think you would like, Brian, if you're um, if you want to try tea, and you like those sorts of rich flavors. Big ol' recommend on golden oolong. The tasting notes, like they say, it's honey, malt, and toasted coconut. It's m very malty. And again, no flavoring needed. Yeah, I desperately need some more of this. It's very easy to get addicted to this. Yunnan province is a really good place for tea as well. You get a lot of different teas out of Yunnan province. Oh, they do still have the Phoenix Oolong. Interesting. Yeah, honey orchid fragrance. It's two ounces for 27 bucks. Yeah. Daddy, where do tea cultivars come from? No, that's not monk shit tea. Where is it? This is the monk shit tea. Our wild ripe teas have always been very popular among monks worldwide. We crafted these teas in our new fermentation factory. Now, let's see, what else? Young Mountain is a good place to go for some teas. I would recommend, another tea that I would recommend is the Kumon White. This is a very strong white tea compared to most white teas, and it's very, um, the, the flavor is very melony. In fact, yeah, they, they have the flavor notes there, peeled, I, I swear to God, um, I'm not just reading it off of there, but yeah, um, cucumber and honeydew melon, that is very accurate. So if you're into more like gentle teas, but still want something reasonably strong, this Kumon White from Young Mountain Tea is very good. Highly recommended, relatively cheap. Sounds like it would be good iced, probably. White teas can often be good iced. So that wouldn't surprise me if it turned out well. Let's see. Silver Needle is often very expensive, but very good. What do they have for their oolongs? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, looks like they've uh, cut back on... I, I think they have a lot of black teas. Because that's really what... Like, that's what India specializes in. These nice black teas. Oh, you know what? There is another kind of tea that you guys will not believe. Let's go here. Stephen Smith has some really good um, of this. Let me find it. Where is it? Zhang Shan. This is a very special kind of black tea. I think someone in chat was actually asking me about it a little while ago. It is a very special kind of black tea called Lapsang Suchong. This tea is smoked. <laughs> it smells and tastes, well, chiefly smells. Um, yeah, smoked with pine boughs, yeah. It smells like bacon. I remember when I um, when I was living with my parents for a little while, I would make lapsang souchong, and my dad would walk into the room and be like, "Ooh, is someone making bacon?" Hoping to get a strip of bacon. And I was like, "Nah, I'm just making lapsang souchong tea." And then he'd walk away dejected. But yeah, uh, this is very good. Very strange. I will say that. Very strange. But very good. 
Does it pair well with bacon? I don't know. But the smell will cling to you all day. It sounds so stupid, but pretty good. So good with charcuterie. You know what? That makes a lot of sense. It would. It. I think it would pair well with cheese. Yeah, I'm there. Pairs well with eggs and burgers, huh? Gonna ask if you ever heard of the Upchucks. Oh yeah, you're the person that added a whole bunch of different YouTubers desperately trying to get attention. Because you're trying to shill yourself. Fuck off. I'm not your advertisement agency. Stop trying to av advertise yourself in such an aggressive manner. It's very unpleasant. I tried to ignore you, but you won't fucking stop. Get out of my face. It's tacky. And it's unpleasant. Nobody likes it. It's shitty. And no, I haven't looked at your work because I refuse. Not if you're going to pull that kind of shit. <sighs> I hate people who try to like use the other creators to be like oh hey look at my stuff and then share it coming into someone else's chat and being like look at my work fuck off eat shit i'm banning you get out god you're pathetic people like you make me sick Anyway, T. Look, I've had a shitty few days, and I'm just not taking this kind of shit anymore. I I try to be patient with people like that. I tried to ignore him, but now he's coming to my fucking stream. What trash. Bottom of the barrel. You're fine, Ika Pika. You're like, you're making art for the stream. You're totally fine. That's different. That's completely different. This person, this person is just trying to chill whatever shitty videos they're making. Anyways, uh, good tea. Lapsang Suchong is very interesting. I, I would recommend at least giving it a try if you think that it sounds interesting. Another thing that some people are really interested in and can be really good, matcha is super special. Um, because matcha is basically just ground up tea leaves. They, they take green tea leaves, they grind them up into a powder, and then you can either just add it to water, or you can use it as flavoring. Because you can add it to, like, different foods. You can add it to, like, ice cream. It's very common in ice cream. Uh, mochi, as well. It, it can be really, really good. Ooh. This is interesting. Gen Mai Cha with rose petals. I don't know how well that would work. I don't know. If you're just getting started, okay, um, Long Jing is kind of interesting. It is a green tea. It's pretty easy to mess up, so I mm, probably would steer you away from it. Jasmine Dragon Pearls are very interesting. Um, quite expensive, but, <laughs> but very special. Uh, for scenting, oh yeah, so made from just the butt of the tea bush, this lovely green tea is pan-fired to neutralize the oxidizing enzyme, then hand-rolled into tiny pearls and placed amidst just-picked jasmine blossoms for scenting. So it's scented with, um, with jasmine, which adds a, it's a very distinct flavor. Jasmine is a very distinct thing. Why are we looking at tea? Because I've lost control of my life. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
No, it is quite expensive though. Is Jasmine sweet? No, it's just very, very floral. It's quite calming. Didn't calm me from talking about that person trying to shill their videos though. God, that's pathetic. So desperate. I'm still a little bit fired up about that. Yeah, it's 45 bucks for four ounces, which is, hold on, two, um, two grams, which is 113 grams. So you're looking at about 50 cents per gram. So if you're gonna do like three grams, it's like a buck and a half. But like these pearls were, will um, give their flavor o over very slowly. Still feel bad talking about your art? No, that's okay. Look, look. If you're just coming, if you're coming in and talking about your art, but you're not trying to be like, hey, look at my art, look at my art. Hey, they like, hey, streamer, take time away to look at my art. And like that, that's different, right? And especially, like, especially if you're making fan art, that's different, right? It's, it is not comparable. This person was just spamming creators trying to get their attention. Being like, hey, like, acknowledge me and look at my stuff. It's absolutely, like, that is different. It's not comparable. So please don't feel, like, self-conscious about talking about your art, okay? This is a very, <laughs> this is just another level i would say so i would say something if it bothered me the reason that i went off on this person is they have been bothering me for a while now and i've been trying to ignore them but then they come into my stream and start pulling shit and keep talking and usually i would just quietly ban them but i i'm tired i've been through a lot recently and I just did not have the patience for it. T. What were they? Not worth talking about. <laughs> yeah, I try not. I usually don't. I, I feel like I have a pretty good track record of not getting like audibly angry about people like that. We're not even going to say their name. It's not worth it. They don't get that. They're acknowledged in the same way a mosquito is acknowledged. We don't name mosquitoes. Right. Good tease to start with. <laughs> okay. I felt good. All right. Right, so we were talking about good teas to start with. If you really want a strong, earthy flavor, um, then ripe pu'er, like I was saying, the yule is a really good starting point. Um, the wild ripe is also quite good. Yeah, this is all from Danong. Uh, let's see. What else? What else is good for starting? Let me, let me just think about what I like. Their their white tea is also very good to start with, although I will say that the flavor is rather gentle. Let's see essentials. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, the 2019 white tea is a really good way to start. How much they got that is bergamot. Oh, you mean um, you're looking for Earl Grey? Uh, I haven't really bought a whole lot of loose leaf Earl Grey. Here we go. Um, but I mean, Stephen Smith has... Uh, I have a pretty good track record with them. 
relatively cheap. Oh yeah, this is, they do do tea bags, but they also do loose leaf. So it's 17 bucks for uh, three and a half ounces. Reasonable. Although again, like this is kind of bitter. This is, this is a little bit bitter. Um, oh, so even with good tea, by the way, I still would steer you all away from tea bags because the tea all gets locked up in the bag and it's hard for the water to percolate through. So it's, it doesn't quite get a terribly even steep and it's hard. Like it, it takes longer to steep and, um, the flavors won't quite be right. Like you need a lot of room for the uh, for the water to move through, which is why I recommend using a Gaiwan. It really is the best of both worlds. And if if you're worried about some of the tea leaves like slipping between the uh, the lip of the cup and the lid, then um, you can use a strainer. Gaiwan, right there. G A I W A N. God damn it, you guys. <laughs> Y'all are the worst. But yeah, um, let's see. Let's take another like 10, 15 minutes or so. Then we'll look at art and we'll call it. I think that's a good way to go. So hey, um, more questions. Uh, what about a French press? You could try it. Um, it you mm, It'll make a lot of tea. That's the big problem that I think of, is French presses tend to have a lot of room in them. You'll end up inadvertently making more tea than you can drink, and you'll, you won't you will be able to get all of the tea you want out of the leaves. That's why half a cup, it, I, I don't even finish uh, leaves in this half cup guy want all the time, and I'm drinking like all day. So you might even want a smaller guy want and then just scale down the amount of leaves. Yeah, you will get absurd amounts of tea. Great if you are hosting a party, <laughs> but not great for personal drinking. But yeah, you can, you can, especially this guy, Juan, because of the way it's made, it's very easy to pick up with one hand. I always just use one hand. Be careful, because, you know, you drink too much tea, and, um... It's, <laughs> you can, you can get a little bit wired. Have you thought about getting something like a samovar? What's a samovar? Oh, again, with the kind of tea we're looking at, you want to steep it over and over again. Okay, if you are going to be sharing tea, I would recommend uh, a, a couple of other little accoutrements. Let me find something real quick. I don't know about the quality of stuff from the Tao of Tea, but you might want to look into local tea shops. You might want to consider getting a tea tray. You know what? Here. I'm trying to go back. For some reason, their website is being really slow. Gaiwan means half open. Oh, wait, you mean sam samovar or Gaiwan? Oh, samovar. Okay. Means half open. Interesting. Yeah, it doesn't quite work so well. This is what I'm looking for. Um, a tea boat or a tea tray. I've mostly heard them called tea trays. But the uh, whole, so these are really cool. I always make my tea on a tea tray that actually Ryan Probert, my, my composer, got for me. Uh, it's a ceramic one with a wood top that you can take off. But the idea is this will catch any water that spills, but also you can dump it. So for example, let's suppose that you're drinking tea and like some tea leaves get into the bottom of the cup and you want to rinse it out. You can just pour a little bit of water in the cup and dump it into the tea tray. Another thing that I sometimes will do is put a little bit of hot water in the guy wan before the first steep. I'll roll the water around, the hot water around in the guy wan to heat it up, and then I'll dump it into the tea tray. And then when I'm done with my tea at the end of the day, I'll um, I'll empty the water. Yeah, 
Th these are really handy if you want to make like a little tea space for yourself to make tea. Because I drink so much tea, I drink tea every day, like all day. Um, a nice little space for my tea is nice I have on my coffee table. Has to smell good when cleaning. I mean, it depends on what you're doing with it. Um, if you're like, you're usually not dumping tea that you drink. Some people, this is something that I didn't really mention, but some people will uh, rinse their tea leaves before they start making them, especially with like oolongs or um, or ripe pu'er. It's very common for ripe pu'er. The reason being, uh, the first steep is sometimes kind of weak because uh, the tea leaves are still waking up. They um, they need water to start um, to on to they need to get wet before they can start giving their flavor. So what some people will do is they'll do a really quick five second steep on the leaves and then just dump that, and then uh, they'll start brewing and start drinking what comes later. So if you want to just like especially if you're making for guests and you want to make sure the first steep is nice and uh, nice and strong you can do a quick rinse on the tea leaves and then dump that and then make another brew. So that's, it's, it's nice to do for guests. Anyway, uh, more questions. Qu qu question. Oh, what else? Uh, is there anything else? I mean, oh, you know what? There is one other thing that I might recommend. Uh, let me see. Do they? Here we go. Sharing cups. Yeah, sometimes if you're try if you want to share tea with someone, then you can get a special little pitcher. The idea being you you can actually sort of see it here. The idea being you brew a gaiwan full of tea, then you take that tea, you dump it into a pitcher. And then you share the tea from that pitcher into small sharing cups. The idea being in that way, everyone can taste that particular steep of tea and taste the same thing. And then uh, rather than me making a steep, because remember I was saying with Gong Fu, every steep is going to be different. So th a pitcher like this allows you to brew a gaiwan full of tea, pour it into the pitcher, then pour uh, the tea from that pitcher out into different cups. Because remember, like I was saying, uh, we're talking about five or 10 or 15 second steeps and just a few more seconds will significantly alter the flavor. So you don't necessarily want to uh, pour some from the gaiwan directly into someone's cup, then go to the next cup because then um, the tea will taste different in the two different cups. So this is a way to sort of equalize it, normalize the flavor. So this is another thing. You, ugh, this is another thing that you can get if you so desire. What happened to the poison is teapot. I never really went out to check it, unfortunately. I, <laughs> I'm just kind of assuming that's probably fine. I did talk about it uh, to some tea experts, and it's probably just terracotta, which means that it's not a big deal. It would actually be more of a deal if it was actually um, a seasoning pot. So it's fine. But yeah, these are the tea accoutrement that I might recommend. If you're really thinking about it, a tea tray is a really good way to go. Um, making sure that you have a cup as well. Obviously, you need a cup. Um, but they, I got, the guy one that I recommended will make half a cup at a time. And just having a um, a nice cup is nice. It, like, if you're going to be drinking out of it a lot, it, it's worth it to have a nice cup. All right. The amount of time it takes to pour the tea will change the taste of the next cup. Yeah, exactly. That's why the pitcher is nice. You can just dump it all very quickly. Don't have to wait uh, moving over to the next person's cup. Okay, let's take one or two more questions and we'll get on to the fan art. Because I know that there is a little bit at the very least. Do you like tea? Yeah. 
How many cups of tea do I drink a day? Um, depends. It depends. Hmm. Sometimes, let's see. Usually I'll drink like, how many steeps will I do? I'll do like 10 steeps. So that's like five cups, five measuring cups. Uh, do I ever drink less? I sometimes, if I get like really distracted and I'm not taking good care of myself and I'm not hydrating, I might drink less, but that's eh, reasonably rare. How do you store your teas? Oh, that's what I forgot. I knew I was going to forget something if I was just doing this all at the top of my head. The way you store your loose leaf tea is very important. Make sure that you keep it. It doesn't have to be perfectly airtight, but keeping it in a container that keeps air from flowing over it is super important because tea that has like teas all taste very different, but teas that have gone bad all taste the same. They all taste like sucking on a penny because they oxidize. Effectively, they rust. Similar effect going on there. It starts to taste metallic. So it's very important to have containers, whether that's a bag that is being closed up nicely um, or an airtight container. Yeah, it's it gets really it gets really bad. Um, all teas that have gone bad taste the same. So make sure that you are, you have either, um, either you keep it in the container, you keep it in the container or um, that, that it came in, or you have a container that you put it in. So yeah, make sure that you have a good container, just keeping it in the bag and making sure that it's nice and tight. That's why tea tins are so nice because they really keep the air from uh, circulating over the tea. All right, let's look at the art and then we'll, we'll call it for today. We have a couple of pieces from Starry Feathers. Let's pull up Twitter real quick. Here we go. So first piece is from Starry Feathers and it's a short comic. <laughs> and they say, let me see if I go on the right. Haha, it does work. So Starry Feathers says, ecological niches require filling and I am probably not the thing for the job. Very rough color draft. I need to add effects and basically redo the colors but I wanted to be ready for today. Aw. <laughs> With Ika Pika gone, who will provide us with Femloren cheesecake? <laughs> I need my dommy harpy mommy. <laughs> Cries chat. Aw. <laughs> whoa, whoa. I'm a good Christian mass of vaguely bird-shaped space gas. I'd never draw suggestive Lauren. <laughs> Ignore this, please. Fantastic. No, I I love this. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Starry Feathers. This is accurate. Because, I mean, it, weren't we all worried? <laughs> no, thank you so much. And then Starry Feathers has made a collage for us today. <laughs> Perfect. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. I, I was quite late today. I, I needed rest. I've been very unwell over the past few days. <laughs> JK, take your time. I, I don't like being late. I try to be on time, but today was a day where I just knew I needed rest. And I'm very fortunate that I'm doing so much better. T and A. T and answers. Hole for tail. Aw. <laughs> That's cute. A hole in, in the table. Tea bag. Oh my god, right. And then <laughs> the mushroom tea. 
There are better methods to trip. <laughs> T-Pog. <laughs> Aw. And then answering questions from chat. Teacher Lauren, best teacher. Aw. I, I hope that I could help people who were interested in tea. I knew that this wasn't going to be a super popular topic. Uh, but I, I hope that I could share something that I really enjoy with everyone. Like a normal tea high. <laughs> Lipton is America's favorite tea the same way heart disease is America's favorite way to die. <laughs> Fruity Flamingo. <laughs> oh my god. Am I going to get in trouble? Use a weed scale. Literally use a weed scale unironically. It's great. Tea Neanderthal uses tea bags and sugar and boiling water. Tea plus ratio. <laughs> Quality. Tea equals chemistry. Ah, the tied back feathers. That's really cute. One, fuck around. Two, find out. Three, enjoy. Science teacher. <laughs> It would be fun to be an English teacher one day. That'd be fun. Lightning tea! Science! <laughs> and then me raging at, at that person who's trying to shill their shit. Alright, guys, don't use don't use other people's streams to shill like your stream. It's the same idea. Like it's so transparent. They like when someone says, "Oh, like, hey streamer, look at my stream. Everyone come to my stream." It's like, fuck off. Any questions? I suck on tea bags. Who hurt you? <laughs> That's what that was. <laughs> In the top. <laughs> Alfred, maybe. Maybe not, Fred. You're making more money doing this than teaching English. You know, um, given that I will be in a non-English speaking country soon, there's a high demand for English teachers. I could like literally teach English, like the language. That could be a thing. <laughs> Maybe part time, right? I, I really enjoy what I'm doing, but this is like, I, you know, I'm keeping in the back of my head like, okay, well, what, what if something happens to YouTube or down the rabbit hole? Who knows? Farah. Farah has angry Lauren Owl friend coming for them tea bags. You can pry my British black teas from my cold dead hands. <laughs> Thank you, Farah. And I will. Fuck your tease. <laughs> Need eggs in more than one basket. I mean, that's kind of partially why I started streaming. It's like, oh, well, things went tits up. I, I guess I'm a streamer now, right? Just move over to full-time streaming, I guess. That certainly is not what I want to do right now. I, I want to keep making down the rabbit hole as long as I can. But that is... <laughs> Thoughts on Weed Cat? Cute. And so this, this art needs a little bit of explanation. I, it, it was late at night. Mike was streaming and I'm on my computer getting ready for bed pretty soon. I get a message from Mike. Mike says, hey, Fred, do you think that you could come into my stream for a minute? Like just in chat. So I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, what's up? He then asks, hey, Fred, there are people who are making gin, or like, what was it, rum, out of elephant shit. Do you believe me? And I, I, I thought for a second, and I said, you know what? Yeah, Mike, I believe you. He then proceeded to show me a video of people making hard liquor out of elephant shit. I, and this is a depiction of that moment. Twack, aka Matt Craig Gaming, 
wrote, I apparently do MS Paint fan art now, so here's Lauren being awoken from a Jabroni mic stream. <laughs> Frank! 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 <laughs> he woke me up so that he could show me <laughs> elephant shit liquor. Oh, God. The bean bed's good. Yeah, the, the bean blanket. Oh, uh, quality. Thank you. Thank you, twack. <laughs> I think that that's it for today. Thank you very much, everyone. And I am going to call it. I'm going to take care of myself. I actually have a meeting I need to get to really quickly. Uh, it starts in five minutes, but I'm going to call it. It's been a fun stream. Thanks for... Um, Thank you very much all for joining me. And, oh, Limes is playing Mario Kart 8. Yeah, no, we're gonna go over there. Um, Lime Malicious. Thank you everyone for joining my streams and for being here um, and helping me get partner. Um, I'm very glad that I actually was able to get partnered and, um, and I, I'm so glad that all of you are enjoying my streams enough to, keep coming back. I'll see you soon. Um, Thursday, I'm still considering what I'm going to do, but I'm thinking that we're going to look at more... I, I have two options that I'm considering right now. We either look at more of the Final Fantasy house, or we look at... Um, we look at some of my old videos and I, and I criticize them. Like, just looking at the old videos and being like, yeah, like, this was shit. And being like, hey, old Fred, good job here. <laughs> but that's what we're going to look at. Like that, it's, it's either Final Fantasy House or that, probably. All right. Goodbye, everyone. And I'll see you all on Thursday. Um, assuming that I'm, that I'm still well. That I'm still on the mend. Goodbye. <laughs>